gone to the grand jury and told the truth at the grand jury. See, I don't, just, I don't know if you can understand this. Try on. Okay. When I, um, when I was arrested, originally arrested for the murders, uh, the murder of Gary Hinman, and I was taken from Indio County Jail to Los Angeles County Jail, I would sit in the county jail cell, and I knew what had transpired, and I had guilt over what had transpired, but I had buried that so deep because I just didn't want to face it. I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to face it. I didn't want to deal with it. And I used to hear Charlie in my head over and over and over again tell me things like, when you're in jail and people pick on you, you be big, you be bad, and you be mean. So much so that everybody will just leave you alone. I was very frightened. Um, I had nobody, no support mechanism around me. And I remembered that when people would question me as to why I was in jail, all I knew is that I had to somehow convince people that I was big, I was bad, I was mean, leave me alone, stay away from me in order to survive. Because I thought I was going to die in prison. I thought I was going to die in jail. I didn't know any other means of surviving. So I said things to people in jail as a defense mechanism. And I said I did things that I, in fact, did not do. Because that's how I was taught to behave when you're in jail. That's why I said what I said. That's why I didn't take responsibility. What happened? Uh, what did you do after all the murders had taken place? What did your group do? Um, we had stayed at Spawn's Ranch, if I remember correctly. You went immediately back to I went back to I went back to Spawn's Ranch with Tex Watson. Um, and the way Spawn's Ranch was set up, there were like uh, movie fronts. And I went into one of the rooms, and Tex went in, and he was talking to Charlie about what had happened. And I went into the room directly next to them. And I remember there was a mattress there, and I, I remember Tex telling Charlie what occurred. And um, I got sick to my stomach, and I passed out. Okay. Did you take any property? From I, the I personally didn't know, and I don't remember whether I have no memory of whether or not there was any property taken, but personally, no, I didn't. Is there anything else that you would like to say about the crime? I'm sure there's going to be questions, more questions later on. Um,
I was riding in a stolen car and that they were both on the lam. I had no idea what on the lam meant, and when I asked what on the lam meant, I was told that they were both um, ex-convicts. They were on parole and they were running. And I, at that point, asked if I could please be let out of the car. Clifton Talaferro, who was also in the car at the time, they stopped the car. He was driving. He stopped the car. And he pulled over to the side of the, pulled over to the side of the road and he stopped the car and he said, You can indeed get out of the car, but if you get out of the car you might not live before we drive away. So you have two choices. You can risk being shot in the back because you know too much about us and you can go to the police or you can stay in the car and go with us. I chose to stay in the car and go with us. Later on, you were arrested and charged with the um, yes. death of the vehicle. All right. On 4.158, you were arrested in Ventura for uh, reproduction of a uh, driver's license? Yes, sir. Okay. You pled guilty of a $10 fine. On 6.268, South Ukiah, you were arrested for possession of dangerous drug with a fire? Yes, sir. And uh, where did you get out of that? Uh, I believe it, I did three months in county jail. How old were you in 68? I was 20. On 6469, you're arrested for uh, Los Angeles for violation of probation. You're released to the Mendocino Sheriff. 6769, uh, South Ukiah, violation of probation. On 81669, uh, Los Angeles Sheriff's Department for Grand Theft Auto. No disposition, so what was the disposition on that one? Uh, for what? Uh, auto theft. What's mean? Grand theft auto. I don't, I don't know whether they brought the charges on that one, so I don't remember. Uh, that was when they had issued the search warrant for Spahn's ranch. Oh, okay. Search okay. warrant right. was and found. We were taken, I was taken to county jail, a Los Angeles county jail, held for, I believe, 72 hours and then three. So you were born in San Diego, California, yes, and I'm the second child and only girl of Edward John Atkins and the former Jeanette Jeff. Family moved to Santa Clara County and it was there where you grew up. It's alleged that both parents drank heavily because of uh, this, your father changed his occupation frequently. Yes, sir. While the mother lived, the both parents worked and were able to provide an adequate, solidly middle class standard of living. Despite this, there was much internal strife in the family, both between the parents themselves and with their children. After the mother died of cancer, uh, when the, you were 13 years of age, the family... I was 14 years okay. uh, The family broke up, the father staying away from the home for extended periods of time. Yes. And the children traveled from relative to relative in various foster homes. By then... Uh, Excuse me, I was never a person in foster home. Never? No, sir. Okay. So any member of your family? Any um, I family? lived with my aunt for a while. Okay. And anybody else in your family? Yeah. Any in foster homes? Home? No, sir. No. Uh, I see you left high school when you were 18. Yes, sir. Did you finish high school? Yes, sir. What grade were you in? Uh, I was uh, in 11th grade. Okay. Did you ever finish up? Yes, sir. You went to San Francisco where you started uh, working in the magazine agency, but quit because of undesirable conditions. You uh, held various jobs, house cleaning, babysitting, working as a waitress, and just traveling around. Most of this period was spent in San Francisco where you frequently, uh, you frequented the Height Ashbury uh, Tenderloin and Broadway districts. It was during this period that you apparently met Manson and decided to join in and travel with the family. You had a little contact with your family since coming to Los Angeles County. And you lived in the uh, communal uh, agreement on Spawn Ranch in Chatsworth, except when living in, on the desert. You never been married? But Before that? Yes. No, during that time, I had not ever been married. Are you married now? Yes, sir. You had one child? Yes, sir. Zizo? Flex? No. Yes. He was born on October 7th, 1968. And where is he? I don't know. The uh, state of California took um, custody away from me. Uh, he was adopted. He was adopted? Yes, sir. We're going to turn to uh, uh, Beverly now. She'll be discussing your progress since your last Yes, yes. We're basically going to just go through what's happened since your last parole hearing in December of 1989. I wanted to check with you because basically you've, you've been disciplinary free since 82 
However, there were a, a couple of uh, 128s that I wanted, would like to have you explain. The most recent one was in 1990, and that's failure to report to your education assignment. Yes, I had the flu. But aren't you supposed to get a... If you don't, the, the rules and the regulations in this institution, according to the medical department, is if you do not have a temperature or fever of 100 or above, you do not get a medical restriction. Right. Um, the medical department ran its department during 1990, and I was literally too sick to get up to go to school. Even though, you, and, and they based that just because you but didn't because have a temperature? Because I did not have a temperature of 100. Okay. And then... Um, then we had another one in 1989 that was just before your last parole hearing, but I noticed the date that it was put in the file would not have been at that parole hearing. And that was, uh, again, failure to report to education assignment and data processing. Again, the same thing. Sick and, and capable of attending school. Okay, okay. So those are the only violations that you have in your file since your last hearing date. Excuse me, I have in my file two other 128s uh, that she had to the documentation of the, the prison. Um, sent me, one was, um, she received a 128 for actions in the visiting room on 72792. Excuse me, uh, that has been removed from my C file per an appeal. No, well that wasn't removed from my file, and also, well, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Hold off on your comments until I get finished with this. Okay. I'm, I'm going what is now currently in the C file and what we also have in our chronological report, two separate things, and, okay. and there are no further uh, 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 disciplinary violations listed that we have before us. Um, I wanted to get into some of the, uh, you're still participating in the vocational data processing, or you, you did during this I time? I completed vocational data processing. Yes. Okay. Um, you, um, yes, you completed 40 hours, and then you successfully completed 40 hours of training for trainers as a facilitator for the Breaking Barriers Program. Yes. And you, you participate in the Breaking Barriers Program. Yes, right. And now, are you uh, a facilitator in that program? Yes, and tell me, tell me what that has meant to you. Oh, that's, that's one of my joys. Um, I'm able to encourage people to get in touch with what it is they really want in life and helping them to learn how to do that. And it's unfortunate that most people, they might want something, but they don't know, they don't have the tools to acquire that. And in, in this kind of an environment, there are women who repeatedly um, had behavior patterns that cause them to do things that maybe they really don't want to do in their hearts, but they don't know that they have any alternatives. And as a breaking barriers facilitator, I'm able to show them that they do have alternatives, give them the tools to make goals to set goals and then show them how to fulfill those goals through education. And when you participated in this program, did you set goals for yes, yourself? Yes, I did. And are you working through yes, to obtain those goals? Yes, I Okay. Um, you received um, some chronos, a thank you from Reverend Johnson for assistance in moving um, to the new interfaith chapel. Um, You've been commended by Officer C. Carter for efforts in assisting to expedite um, the level of cleanliness and maintenance necessary to maintain the flue apartments. What are the flue apartments? That were Those are the family living unit apartments. And I believe since I um, utilize those apartments as part of a member of this community, it is also my responsibility to help maintain those apartments and make sure that they are um, clean, kept clean for other families that go back there. Okay. And you attend the lifers orientation meeting? Yes. How often do you? The lifers or the lifers or long-termers mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. as often as I can, which is not as frequent as I would like to, because their meetings meet at the same time I have visits with my husband. 
Okay, and then you also were commended by Chaplain Johnson for the beautification of the CIW project. Mm -hmm. That was, was that the planting and? Yeah, uh, the grounds surrounding the chapel were in great need of care. And so I'm going to have my planted flowers and planted grass and just take the next step out. Okay. Um, you participated in New Beginnings? Yes. Yeah. What What did that program in? New Beginnings is uh, victim services oriented. It took me three years to get into the program. I had to wait three years to be able to participate in that. And in that I am an awesome facilitator. I had to go over to uh, the reception area, the reception center. Uh, as new commitments are coming in, and we have an orientation where we show them from victim services on the effects of crime on victims of crime and we help raise the awareness level of the criminal of the cost of crime to the victims. The victims. Okay, then you've been participating in A, A, and N, A. Um, when did you when did you start really uh, being involved in, in A and N? I got involved in A, A, and A in 1984. Mm -hmm. and I was removed from close custody because A, A, and A was an evening activity up until 1984. I was not allowed to participate. I went to A, A, and A uh, because I was told to go. And originally, I was told that it was a requirement, so I went. I think it was maybe a year after I went to A, A, and A that I really began to get involved in it and began to um, follow the process. And, and started this in 1984? In 1984, and about 1985, I got involved in 12 Steps and started really listening to what the, the 12 Steps were. Um, I don't think I did any of the 12 steps until maybe 1986 when I met a sponsor. I found somebody who would sponsor me from the outside as a panel member. And she and I sat down. We had a, she was able to come into the institution and we sat down. And I did my, what they call fearless moral inventory and where I admitted to God and mother of one other human being the exact nature of all my faults. Um, and became chairperson, I think, in 1985, perhaps 1986. Yes. Involved in it as, and, and served. At the board hearing in 1989, you indicated you were not attending because it was an absolute waste of time, that you didn't feel it was necessary to go and sit and listen to the same stories week after week. But what had happened was um, in about 1987-88, I got very disillusioned with um, AANA because I did listen to the same stories over and over and over again. And I left it, and I thought, my the way I absorbed AANA is that you take it, you take the 12 steps, and you live them, and you take it to the people in your community, and you offer it. And I had thought that um, in giving the 12 steps away, I would be able to maintain my own 12 steps, that sitting week after week was not the best way to go. And I didn't think it was a waste of time. I thought there was more to do. Well, but you did testify at that time that you thought it was a waste of your time. I thought, I don't know that I said, did I say it was a waste of time? I think, time? as I recall that. Maybe I did. Um, and the parole board again encouraged me to go back. And I was defiant. I did not want to go back. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I said, I'll go back. And I didn't go back with a happy attitude. I did not want to sit every Wednesday night and listen to the same thing over and over again. I'll be really honest with you. I didn't want to go back. And I went back. And I did. So now when did you start back? I started back. It took me almost nine months because they had changed the policy at a and And they had a waiting list. They only lost 75 inmates in AA and a So it took me about nine months waiting to get back involved. And as I understand here, at this facility, they have two different programs. They have one that's There's four. OK. There's Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, CODA, and Al-Anon. But then I understand there's a separate 12-step program, too? There is, there is indeed a 12-step program. And I just finished 12-step program, I think, about three months ago. I went through 12-step program, signed up again for it. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty much convinced that there's something there for me. Okay. I, for a while, I thought, well, it's, I'm not drinking, I'm not using drugs, what's the use? It's kind of like uh, somebody who has cancer. If they go into remission, why go get chemotherapy over and over again? That's the kind of 
philosophy and thought pattern that I had was that it was a waste of time because I'm not drinking, I'm not using drugs, nor do I want to. So why go sit and listen to people talk about how they... But it's a lot it's, different. Yes, it is. Tell me, what different. did what did you use um, when LSD... During, during the commission? Yes, yeah, or during, prior, prior to your... To, I started drinking when I was 18. Um, and what did, what did you drink? Grasshoppers, because it was a sweet drink. A lot? A lot. Kahlua, anything that was sweet, Singapore slings, um, any of the sweet drinks. Um, and I began to realize I was doing the same thing my parents did, and I hated what my parents did. And I hated what alcohol was doing to me. And I got involved in drugs. And this doesn't make any sense. But I got involved in drugs to get away from alcohol. Um, I was introduced to marijuana by two sailors. Did you smoke a lot of marijuana? Yeah, I did. And for how many years did you use? Uh, from 1966, late 66, until my incarceration. Okay, and then you used LSD. I used LSD. I used methadrine, which is pure speed. Um, I used Benny's, which is another form of speed. I used cocaine. I, I only snorted it one time, but I did use it. I used um, hashish. So at the time you're using all these drugs, were you also involved with alcohol? Or no. okay, but you you do agree to an alcoholic? Oh yes. And what about are you a drug addict too? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. What's the you first? Must have an addictive personality and, and struggle with that a lot. And that I'm not doing drugs and I'm not drinking. I smoked for many years and I had to put that addiction away. I struggle with um, coffee. I, I know coffee's not good for me, and yet I drink coffee. You know, so I struggle with that, and I do use the twelve steps. Okay. And what's the first step? To admit that I am powerless over alcohol, I am powerless over drugs. And have you come to accept that yeah. and believe that? Yeah. Okay. Not not easy, but yes. Okay. Um, you were also involved in building a new you. Yes. You got a certificate for yes. that. What is what is building a new you? Uh, a prison fellowship, which is headed by Chuck Colson, came into the institution and. A friend of mine asked me if I would like to go, and I told her, sure, I very much believe in God, and thought that I would go ahead and go, and it was a two-day seminar, weekend seminar, that I participated in, like a Bible study and a seminar okay. to encourage people to trust in God. <laughs> I have, yeah. a, I have a certificate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure I have, started, yeah, I have a certificate else. in the files here. And you're, you're married. You got married in 87, is that correct? Yes. How did you meet your husband? My husband had read um, two books. He had read Helter Skelter, and then he had read my book. And he was curious as to how somebody could make such a change from a person who would do what Helter Skelter depicted to somebody who could then confess Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, and he wrote to me um, out of curiosity, and I was very, very impressed with his letter. And he, uh, after my first marriage, I didn't write many men. In fact, I didn't write any men for about five years. I didn't have anything to do with any kind of a relationship at all. I needed to get in touch with me. You said after your first marriage? Oh, you were married before then? Oh, while you were... While I was here. I was oh, okay. married once in 1981, um, and I got married, dissolved in 1982. It lasted three months. Disastrous mistake. 